My name is Lynette. Welcome back to the Beauty of Grace. Um, I want to talk to you today about the Lord will heal your hurt. And I'm talking about this because sometimes um, if you haven't experienced betrayal um, from someone that is close, someone that have been in your inner circle, um, a relative, a close friend, uh, an ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. Sometimes we all have experienced hurt and pain and betrayal by someone that is close to you, someone that knows your secrets. How do we handle that? What do we do? Okay. Um, and I want to go into Psalm 55. Um, and we're going to go into verse 3. All right. It says, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me and in wrath, they hate me. I'm going to read also the New Living Translation. My enemies shout at me, making loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. So first of all, what we have to understand is that the voice of the enemy. And sometimes the enemy will use people that are close to us. Sometimes the enemy will use those that he knows that we love, people that we care about. Okay. And he will have them to say things about you. Uh, to gossip things about you, okay, to tell about your past. You know, we all have a past. We all have done things in our past that we may not be proud of. But there are people that will come out and tell others about your past. And we know that we've been forgiven by God. If, we, if you were saved, all your sins that you've done in the past and sins that you are currently that you currently and in the future may do are forgiven. But the devil loves to bring up. He loves to bring up what you used to do. He loves to bring up um, what you've done in the past. He loves to do that. And he'll definitely will use someone that is close to you or that have been in your inner circle to do that. And what they do, they shout out, making loud and wicked threats. They shout out, saying a gossip, gossiping about you. They'll shout out, saying things, negative things about you. Okay? And they says, my enemy shout at me, making loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. Verse 4 says, my heart pounds in my chest. The terror of death assaults me. Now, this psalm was a psalm that was written by David. And we know that David was a warrior. All right. And so David had a lot of enemies. Okay. But in this particular psalm, this uh, enemy that David is talking about, it's not like the, an enemy, uh, someone that he doesn't know. Okay. That's what made this psalm so interesting. This enemy is someone that he knows, okay? And so this is what David is praying to God about, all right? In verse 6, David says, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I would fly away and rest. You know, sometimes we can go through, guys, situations that are so tough um, that sometimes you just feel like, you know, I wish I could just go away for a while. Just leave everything and go away, you know. Um, I heard a pastor's wife, we were in a head of meeting, a women's group meeting one time at church, and I heard a pastor's wife say that she sometimes just feel like leaving it all. And, you know, I never, I was like, mm, I wonder why she said that. I wonder why she felt that. But there are times where you can go through so, so much crisis, that you just want to take a vacation, that you just want to 
just like what David was feeling, that I could just fly away like a dove. Now, we're not talking about where you have a suicidal thoughts and want to leave this earth. We're not talking about that. Um, you know, and we have to remember there are people that want to end their life because of what they're going through, because of their crisis that they're going through. And if you are one that has have had suicidal thoughts, know that that is not God. Know that those thoughts come from the enemy. Okay. And, but know that God wants you to live a long and satisfied life and that God can help you in any situation that you may find yourself in, no matter how bad it is. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. But sometimes we just feel like getting away. Right. And just to have some time of rest and, and time of peace, you know, because even Jesus dealt with someone that betrayed him. He dealt with a man named Judas who was in his inner circle, who ate with them, who walked with them. One that saw the miracles that Jesus did to help people. He saw those things, but yet he still betrayed Jesus. Okay. And so it shouldn't be a surprise when as Christians, if you're a Christian, there are some times in your life you're going to go through some betrayal by somebody, you know. And a lot of times, like I said, it's usually someone that you know, okay, unfortunately. All right. Because what we have to understand, everyone is not happy for you, okay. As God uses you, as God bless you in your career, in your life, everyone is not happy about that. And sometimes those that are even close to you can become jealous. Look at Cain and Abel. They were brothers, okay? But Cain became jealous of his brother Abel and killed his own brother, okay? So a lot of times it's people that are close to us. They can be right in your own family. It can be people, friends that you've known for years, they can still be jealous of you, okay? And they will they can betray you and hurt you, all right? So that's what we want to talk about, how the Lord will heal your hurt, okay, your pain, okay? And also what we have to learn is to, when we go through betrayal, when we go through hurt, yes, we get angry. And we get mad, but we don't want it to turn into bitterness because when you become bitter, bitterness can cause sickness in your body. Okay. Uh, unforgiveness. It can result into unforgiveness and so forth. So we want to learn to let that go. All right. And so when you let that go, you know, there will be a peace within, but sometimes we have to ask God to help us let it go. Because sometimes we can get hurt really bad. All right. And so let's see what else David says. Okay. The next verse, well, the other verses, verse 13 through uh, 15. Okay. Well, let's say 13 and 14. Let's look at that. 12, 13, and 14. Okay. This is what David says, and I thought this was interesting when I read this, but David was saying, it is not an enemy who taunts me. I could bear that. It is not my foes who so arrogantly insult me. I could have hidden from them. He said in verse 13, he said, instead, it is you, my equal, my companion and close friend. Now, I thought this was very interesting. Because David is saying how he was betrayed by someone that he knew. Someone that was a close friend. Someone that was an acquaintance. Someone that he may have shared secrets with. You know, and, and hung around. He said, I could bear, I could deal with it if it's somebody that I don't know. Or, you know, somebody that, that an enemy who taunts me. He said, I could bear that. But what hurt is when it's somebody you know, somebody may be in your family that is persecuting you, that is gossiping about you, that is making threats to you. 
Verse 14 said, what good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together to the house of God. So that's how it is. That's what David dealt with this. When that close companion betrays you. And you know, betrayal, it just doesn't feel good, does it? Um, someone that you really know and they want to hurt you. They want to come after you. It, it, it doesn't feel good. Okay. And I like what David says in verse 15. Let death, well, this is what he said. Let death, not verse 15, I'm sorry, but verse 16. He said, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. You know, God just doesn't want to save. He just said, just doesn't save us from our sins. Okay. But this salvation package that we have, it consists of where he will save us, save our finances. He will save our marriage. He will save our relationship. And he can save us and rescue us uh, in the times of trouble. The Bible says that he is a present help in the time of trouble. So he will heal our hurt. He will help us go through those times that are difficult. He will help us go through these times where people will persecute you and say all negative things about you, whether it's true or not. Okay. A lot of this, a lot of times, if, if you are a child of God, is an attack from the enemy. And the enemy wants to get you distracted, child of God. They want you to be distracted. They want you to be where you're worried all the time, where you're not reading your word and studying your word, where you're not listening to videos that can help you and, and help you grow in Christ. They want you to just don't even, it's no need to even pray to God. Okay. So they want you to distract you. And, but what you do is become even closer to God. What you do is continue to pray to the Lord. Tell the Lord how you feel about this situation. Okay, be honest with God and ask him to intervene in your situation. Rescue you from betrayal, from hurt, from that pain to help you. Because we do have feelings and we hurt. Okay, so I do believe that Jesus, Jesus might have hurt when he got betrayed by Judas. I don't think Jesus felt good, okay? He had feelings as well. And he and he knew what Judas was going to do. But that still didn't mean that he didn't love Judas, all right? Because Judas loved the money more, okay? His mind was on money, all right? And so, but Jesus still loved him. And it's not that we don't love our enemies, God tells us to love our enemies. Okay. You know, we're not, we don't pray, pray prayers like David did when David said, Lord, get them, you know, may death come upon them. You know, David just prayed how he felt. Right. But, but, um, we do pray and ask God to help and intervene, confuse them. This, this Psalm also talks about confuse my enemy. Okay. Shut up their mouth. Okay, God can call situations in their lives and teach them lessons. And if it is another Christian that's persecuting you or trying to hurt you or is talking negative regarding you, God can teach that Christian child manners. Okay, he can teach them. They, he, they can go through lessons where they'll learn about when to talk and when not to talk and how to talk about their other, about other Christians. Okay. Cause in God's eyesight, we are all righteous. Regardless of what we have done in our lives, we are still righteous in the eyesight of God. And we have, there are some Christians that are law. I call them law Christians and they point fingers at people. And they judge people what they've done in their past. And, you know, if, if they if, if a Christian has fallen or have gotten into some sin, they're they're constantly judging and pointing fingers. OK, 
These are law Christians. All right. So, um, and God knows how to deal with his children. The Bible tells us that he does discipline those he loves. So sometimes our brothers and sisters in Christ don't know how to shut up, right? Sometimes they don't know how to um, let things, leave things alone, okay? So God has to intervene and have it where they'll hush their mouths, all right? And, and he will do that. God doesn't teach us lessons by accidents or diseases or sicknesses, no. But he can allow situations that will get our attention and where we will learn lessons from. And that's what we pray for, for our enemies or for those who's trying to persecute us, especially if it's other Christians. Okay. All right. So verse 18 says this. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many against me. So David was saying there were many people that were against me. But he has redeemed my soul in peace. God will give you peace, child of God, during this time. During this valley experience is what I call them. It's not going to last forever. All right. And these are the times where we snuggle up close to, to the Lord. These are the times where we say, Lord, you know, only you can intervene. Only you can help me. And where you can learn to sleep in peace, have peace at night, knowing that God is going to take care of your situation. Okay. I, I'm not going to say that God will pull you out of every situation, every trial, every crisis or every trouble that may come in your life. But I will say that he is going to be with you during these times. All right. They don't, may not feel good, but we learn less. We learn how to trust God during these times. We learn how to um, confide in God during these times because you know that you have the forgiveness of sins by the Lord. Okay, you are still righteous, even though in the past you may have done some things. Okay, you are still righteous. You are a child of God and you are righteous. All right. So no one has the, uh, should be pointing fingers at you. Because if things are uncovered about their lives and what they have done, okay, they wouldn't want anyone to know. All right. So... We all um, need help from God in some areas of our lives. None of us are up here, okay? We are all still growing and growing and learning in Christ. And as we grow in Christ and as we learn about who we are in Christ, then it'll help also from the inside out. Our character will, will um, it will help our character. It will help with our integrity. It will help with our morals as we continue to learn who we are in Christ. Okay. In verse 22, this is what we, if you're going through a situation like this where you're being betrayed by someone or have been, or is currently hurting, this is what verse 22 says. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. The New King James Version says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. And know, child of God, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So all we do is cast our burden upon him. Cast those cares upon him. Talk to him. Tell him what you're going through. And he will take care of the situation that your enemy is trying to do. He will take care of the traps. He will take care of the plots that they're trying to do. That no weapon formed against you, that weapon will not prosper. And every tongue that comes against you, it shall be condemned. Okay? So, it's not saying that the weapon won't uh, that it won't form, but that it will not prosper. Okay. So that gives me relief 
that gives me joy to know that your father who loves you will take care of you. You just give those burdens to him and he'll do just that. Amen. God bless you. I just wanted to give you some words of encouragement, child of God, um, so that you know sometimes things happen and um, everybody's not happy for you. Everybody does not like you. Okay. And because um, if Jesus went through that type of thing, then we're going to go through it in our lives as well. But I want to let you know that don't give up hope. Okay. Don't think that it's over. All right. It may, things may look uh, dim, but know that the Lord will take care of you. Okay. Amen. He will not let you down. Okay. And he will heal your hurt. Amen. So if you know someone that is going through a uh, hurt right now, they might have been in a, uh, just broke up with someone, was in a relationship, might be going through a divorce or whatever, send them, share this video with them so that they can be encouraged, okay? And know that the Lord wants to heal that hurt. Amen. All right. And um, just thank y'all so much for coming back to the beauty of grace. And uh, subscribe. Now, if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And uh, I thank you so much. And I'll be back hopefully um, very soon. So y'all take care and be blessed, everybody. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.